Hello everybody. I hope everybody is doing great. Uh, my name is Chef Rob. I'm in Long Island. My son Chris is here today and we were just saying it seems like a long time since we did our last festival and it was only a month ago but that's when it was. So everybody we are trying to get everybody to go to the uh, libraries to get movies and then make all these different dishes with us and then have a great movie night. So some of you may be doing that tonight. Some of you can save this and just watch it a different time and, and make a bunch of these delicious appetizers. Okay, so uh, thank you to all the libraries participating. Uh, we have a lot of fun. Uh, I love doing it. Chris does too. And we have a lot of patrons out there who I know really look forward to this. So thank you, everybody. Let's start with the pizza nachos. Okay, and I'll tell you little stories about this. I have my oven preheated to 325 right now. I am just going to turn on this burner right here. And I'm just going to start cutting up some onions and some peppers. Red peppers, yellow peppers, green, whatever you want to use would be fine. Okay. So I'm just going to take some onion. And then we're going to put in some ground beef as well. Anna said, come and make it for me. I'm lazy. <laughs> no, don't be lazy. Make this. I hope you're doing well. Okay. And let's peel these. I'm going to add in just a little drizzle of olive oil in here. And we're just going to get the onions and the peppers nice and soft. And th with this, you can add extra peppers, less onion, more onion, whatever you want to do. And it's going to come out really, really good. Okay. So I'm just going to cut this up here. We're going to add in a little bit of garlic. Emily said, glad to get on. I like the nacho one. Oh, good, Emily. Hello to you and your family. Okay, so let's just start sauteing these up right here. We will tell you about our other food festivals that we have coming up in March and uh, April and May. And always check out my Facebook page, which is Simply Creative Chef Rob. And on there, you will get to see all different libraries, all different... Uh, Recipes uh, this week coming up. We are doing some Irish things. So we are going to do Irish soda bread, Irish soda bread muffins. Going to do a broccoli and cheddar cheese soup. So for you fans that like that, we're going to add these onions in here. And now I'm just going to take some of the peppers. Always make sure you wash those uh, vegetables really good. I'm going to use the red pepper as the recipe says. Shop around with the different prices. You know how you see the prices really skyrocketing. Shop around. There can be sometimes some deals to be found. And always take out this little bit of white in here, okay? Because it's just kind of bitter. So just kind of trim that out of there. Anna said, hi, Chris. Hello. And James said, Chef Rob, am I able to do this program again? I want to do it again with my grandchildren. Absolutely. Just uh, wherever, if you're watching it on my Facebook page or whatever library you may be watching it through, they will have it up. Okay. So yes, you could do this at a different time and cook along with me. And you could always have some of the vegetables prepared ahead of time. Donna said, love broccoli and cheese soup. So I hope you will watch. We will be doing that, I think it's Wednesday night, no, Tuesday night. That will be at the Detroit Public Library. And Emily X, can I just use red? Red? Uh, I think you're talking the pepper, of course, yes. Um, I like colors, so a lot of times I'll mix in a lot of different colors, too. And let's add in this red onion, right? Uh, red pepper. Now a little bit of fresh garlic, about two cloves of fresh garlic. And we're just gonna let that cook down a little bit. Just smashing the garlic, give this a nice chop, add this into the peppers and onions. Now you could use regular tortilla chips if you wanted to do that, but I came up with something a little bit different. 
And I do this at the libraries with the teens and some of the children. And they absolutely love these. Addy said, hi, Chef Rob. Of course, a sharp knife. <laughs> Thank you, Addy. How are you? I'm adding a little bit of kosher salt in here and just a little bit of fresh ground black pepper. I'm gonna let this cook for about three, four minutes. And then we're gonna add in about a half pound, a little bit more of fresh ground beef, okay? A lot of times you'll see in the ground beef that it will be, you may get a little brown inside, okay? It's still safe, but chopped meat, ground beef, you wanna use one to two days in, in the refrigerator. Don't let it sit any longer than that. It's really, really important, okay? All right. So as this starts to soften, we will start taking our ciabatta bread, and we're going to put that into the oven in a few minutes. So I'm just going to take a silicone baking mat, okay, on a cookie tray. We have another comment. Hello from Christy and the patrons of the Bayville Free Library. Hi, Christy. How are you? I haven't talked to you in a long time. I hope you're doing good. Everybody, I'm just going to take a really good ciabatta bread and just cut it into thin slices, just like this. Laura asks, why do you use kosher salt versus regular salt? Uh, the coarseness uh, of it, you can uh, kind of feel how much you are putting into uh, the dish. And uh, a regular fine salt is just going to give it a really salty taste. So this just kind of goes throughout and it just brings out the flavor of the meat, the peppers, the onions a lot better. Michelle X, can you use either ground turkey or chicken instead? Absolutely, or vegetarian. Just do a lot of peppers, onions, and you can make this vegetarian style as well. Okay. Barbara X, is this bread similar to French bread? Absolutely, yes. Whatever you like, ciabatta bread, uh, a French bread, Italian bread, any of them would work. Whatever is really your favorite. Okay, and typically I use one loaf, one baguette. And a good quality one is going to really hold up a lot better with the nachos, so try to use that. Okay, so I'm just going to spread these out really well, just like this. We're going to make a shrimp scampi flatbread in a little while. You'll love that. Okay, get nice and soft. So everybody, my son, uh, next Saturday, Chris, what are you doing next Saturday? He's doing something really fun. I am. I'm going to an Elton John concert after waiting over two years for it. He was supposed to go uh, April of, when, of 2022 of COVID. So you're going to have a great time, Chris. Yes, I will. Kathy X, what if someone doesn't like onions in the family? You just uh, skip it or make a little on the side with onions and, and do a half with onions, just like a pizza. Just uh, switch it up a little bit. If you want to add pepperoni to this, that would work as well. Anything that you would put on a pizza goes really good. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. Thank you, Anna. And the Monmouth County Library said, hooray, Piano Man. Piano Man. Well, that, that's more Billy Joel, but he, he does play the piano, so he's, he's one of them. Yes. The Monmouth County Library. You guys are just great. I have a, always love your emails talking to you. You guys, just a pleasure. Adrian Weber said, you will love it. He never takes breaks. Nope, but he's, it's going to okay. be a good show. I saw Adrian last week over in Cutchog Library. Everybody, we're just going to take some of the ground beef. Going to add it to these peppers and onions here. So you can see that the uh, ground beef, not brown inside, but if it was, like I said, uh, all it is is the oxygen uh, just kind of went away from it. And that's why it gets a little brown. does not mean it's bad at all. Okay. I'm using the 88-12 uh, chopped meat, which means 12% uh, fat, which is pretty good. DNX, how do you know if it's a good loaf or not? 
if it's a good loaf or not. You know, I actually go by what what you, the family, like, um, a, a good quality one. If it's a store brand one, typically it's not going to be. I always remember using this brand called La Brea from California, and it was just fantastic. I haven't seen it in a long time. But when you find something that you really like, that's a good loaf. That's what it means. So let's just keep after these pizza nachos. You want to break this up really, really well. Okay. I'm going to take some of the olive oil. And we're just going to kind of rub this right on to the baguette. And we're going to put it into a 325 oven. I just want to get them toasted. What do you got, Chris? Mom just commented on there that it's my 21st birthday on when, on this upcoming Wednesday. So thank you, everyone. Yes. Uh, let's see. Gail X, what library do you say you were doing the broccoli cheddar ch cheese soup for? Uh, that one will be at the Detroit Public Library, and that is on Tuesday uh, at 7 o'clock, I think. six 630, I believe it is. So I am just rubbing this with some extra virgin olive oil. The extra virgin olive oil, try to make sure that it just comes from Italy and not from Spain and Peru and all over the place. Some bottles will have all different regions where it's from and typically those olive oils are not that good. You want it to be in a nice dark bottle, okay? Because that way the sunlight does not get through it. So I'm going to sprinkle this with a little kosher salt and black pepper and just pop these into the oven until they get toasted. The Monmouth County Library said, we love cooking with Chef Rob and Chef Chris. Uh, Patty said, my husband and I really enjoyed seeing you at Elwood Library. We so enjoyed our meals at home. Oh, that's great. Good. Thank you so much. Everybody, a little bit of kosher salt right on top of the baguettes. Let's just pop this into the 325 oven just until it gets a little toasted. It'll be about 10 minutes. So, excuse me for one second. Let's see. Kirsten X, will t uh, Tuesday's Detroit event be on Facebook Live? Facebook Live, yes. On our page. Yes, if you go to Simply Creative Chef Rob's page, you'll see it there. But get the recipes from the Detroit Public Library, okay? Read and everybody oh. on, everybody, all the different libraries that are on here today, please go to their Facebook, their website, check out all the different uh, events that they have. They still have a lot of virtual events, because I don't think virtual is going away, which is great for a lot of people but we are back in the libraries as well, which is so nice. Rena X, what makes Italian olive oil better than the other Mediterranean olive oils? Uh, Italy typically has the best olive oil. Uh, so as taste, when you see a little from Greece, a little from Peru and uh, Spain, it's a blend of so many different ones and the whole combination together, really not that good. Never buy light olive oil. You think you're getting less calories. It's the same calories, and it comes in a clear bottle, and it turns rancid very, very quickly. So be really cautious on that. Patty X, do you still prefer the Costco Evo? Uh, uh, that it is good, yes. They do sell a good brand, and it is okay, yes. And I think you can still get it there. I know we're having a little food shortages as well, too. So this ground beef here, I want to cook this probably for about five to six minutes and then until there's no pink in here. And then I'm just going to drain any excess grease because let's make it as healthy as possible. But you do want to make sure it is cooked all the way through. Typically, you want to have ground beef cooked through to 158. Different parts of the country, it will be as high as 160. Okay, but when you get to 160 or above, you are going to get that to be uh, pretty dry, okay? Now, you can use a bottled tomato sauce. You can make your own tomato sauce, and that's what, whatever one you want to use, that's what's going to come out best. I'm going to take a little bit of mozzarella cheese and my box grater here, 
So I'm using about a pound of the mozzarella cheese, and I'm just going to grate it. Whenever you can have it where it's a little bit frozen, uh, that will grate a lot easier. Okay, when it's really soft or warm, uh, it's going to kind of mash into it and uh, not grate very well. So this is grating well, so you can just see how it just kind of... I had this in the freezer for about 25 minutes, and it just seems to work a lot better. Cha said, hello from the Detroit Public Library. How are you? We have been, we just started working together a few uh, months ago, and it's been a pleasure, and we have a lot of events planned there as well, too. Okay, so just about a pound. I'm going to see how that goes, and I can always add more to it. Okay, now my ground beef is just about all cooked through. And when I created this program I had with where I wanted you to go to the library and pick out movies because I know everybody's doing all the different Amazon things and I, I want you to go to the library and get the movies there. They have them. So really, go to that library. All right, so I am just going to drain this grease. I'm just going to do this inside, and I'll be right back. I'm checking my baguette. Any questions, Chris? Nope, don't see any. Okay. Okay, and we just have about two to three minutes on the baguettes to get nice and crusty. So I'm gonna leave that to the side here. Gail said, I've been unable to find your program at the Detroit Library. Also, at what will it be held? It's oh. on our Facebook page. So it may be on their website posted, but if you contact them, you can get the recipe, but you'll be watching the video on our page. Okay, so this is all cooked through right here. While I'm waiting for the baguette, let's just start the shrimp. We're just going to move over here, and we're going to add a little bit of butter and olive oil combination in here. So I'm just turning this burner on. Adding three tablespoons of butter. We're just going to let that melt down. And just about a teaspoon of olive oil. Just a little drizzle right there. We're gonna let that melt down. And now with the shrimp, about a half pound to almost a pound, okay? So in that ballpark there. But your best tasting shrimp will be in between the size 15 to 30, okay? You never want it to have an ammonia smell to it. It means that they're no good then, okay? They're turning on you. Shrimp will only last for about one to two days in the refrigerator. So you want to use them up really quick. And I'm talking raw. Now, after you cook them, they will last about another day or two, and that would be it. Okay, so you have to really move them along. With shrimp, bigger is not better. Okay, uh, the bigger they are, the older they are, and the tougher they are. So the smaller the shrimp, in between like the 15 to 30, sweeter and, and more tender for you. Marianne asked, is the butter salted or unsalted? Uh, I'm using unsalted, but for this recipe here, whatever you had um, in your house is just fine, okay? And Gail said, um, she meant to say what time will it be held? Uh, let's see, there's a 6.30, Gail. Okay, so I'm just gonna move this around just a little bit here. I'm gonna add some shrimp, some garlic, and a little bit of salt and pepper. You wanna make sure they are separated so that way they cook through really nice and evenly. So we just did a whole bunch of children's classes at many libraries this week. And uh, one of the most popular ones was Min Minion Cupcakes. So we did Minion Cupcakes. I never bought so many Twinkies in my life because that's what we did used for the Minion. And when he says we, he means just him. Just me. Yeah, I don't yeah. say we, but yeah. It's then everyone, everyone at the library expects to see me now. 
Yes, people are disappointed when Chris is not live with me at the library. They leave when they see it's just him. No, yeah, they, I'm kidding. Ooh. So now I'm just going to take a little bit of fresh garlic and just going to add this right into the shrimp. About three to four cloves. Just finally mince it. Kathy then, said I love the Minion movies. Yeah. Always so good, right? Make these appetizers and sit down and watch some Minion movies, Kathy. Rena wants to know how to make the Minion cupcake. Oh, oh boy. You can do it as an extra one day. You know what? I heard there's a Minion movie coming out around June to early July. Chris, you remind me later, and as we get closer, we'll do that with one of the libraries. Okay? Sounds good. Or on the f festival. Okay. A little bit of fresh garlic here. A little kosher salt. And it's on a medium-high heat. And you just don't want to burn the garlic. Okay, very, very important. So we're just gonna let these sizzle. They take about five minutes. We'll turn them in a minute or so. I am gonna go get the baguette out of the oven and we're gonna make some pizza nachos. Okay, so everybody, we are just going to build it on a smaller tray right here. I'm taking some parchment paper. That way any sauce cheese gets in the corners, makes it nice and easy to clean. And what I like to do is just kind of layer it just like this here. Our next food festival is going to be very healthy. But you know what, Chris? At the end, and you know, we were just talking about the Minion Cupcake. Let's do the Minion Cupcake at the end of the next food festival, okay? That sounds good. Rena, you're going to remind me, okay? Barbara said, Chris, what do you do when you are not assisting your dad? Um, I go to school full time to be a teacher, and I also substitute at an elementary school. So I stay pretty busy. And then he goes to Elton John concerts. Oh yeah, weekly, yeah. <laughs> weekly, yes. Okay, so just spread them out really good. We are going to take that ground beef and put it right on top. I'm gonna Turn those shrimp in one second. Okay, let's just go over here to the shrimp. I'm just going to turn these over. Shrimp scampi, always so good. And now on a flatbread, you'll really love it. You can use regular pizza dough, flatbread, uh, the non bread. Uh, Pita bread, any, any of those would work well. Kirsten said, sounds great. Barbara said, good for you, Chris. Thank you. And Monmouth County Library said, you'll be an amazing teacher, just like your dad. Thank you. Okay, so I'm just going to reduce that. Let's just take some of the ground beef. Put this right on top here. This is actually cool right here, so I'm going to take that. And just gradually, because you want to, and you want to make sure you get all that grease off, okay? Because you don't want them to be greasy nachos. Just kind of spread this throughout. This is great for, of course, movie night, Super Bowl would be good, right? Any of the sports. Just for any of those nights that you just say, let's have appetizers. You know, I've never really seen a recipe for pizza nachos. Sometimes I'll just, you know, think of these things and they just come up and you, and like I said, I, I don't like to use the tortilla chips because I'm thinking Italian totally with this. Okay. Okay. That looks like it's enough. You don't want it to be overpowering. So now you would put on some of the tomato sauce. 
Okay, again, whatever sauce you like, that's what you put on. And just kind of dab it around just like this. No salsa, tomato sauce, because these are Italian. How's that look, everybody? And you bake this in a 325 oven, and it should take about 12 to 15 minutes. But just keep your eye on it, okay? And I just want a little bit of sauce on there. I have my cheese. I know we all like a lot of cheese on here. Gail X, could you use Italian sausage meat out of the casing, either instead of or mixed with the ground beef? It, Gail, that would taste great. Absolutely. Add some pepperoni. A little pepperoni. That's right. Okay, just like that. And now you can also sprinkle a little bit of fresh Parmesan cheese on here. Okay, for this amount, about a quarter cup would be perfect. And these taste really, really good. Another way to use this up and it, for it to taste really good, have a little pesto on the side. Dip this in some pesto, that would be really, really good. So I'm gonna pop this into the 325 oven and let this cook for about 10, 12, 15 minutes at the most, okay? Go ahead, Chris. Joy X, are the recipes listed on the Facebook page? Yes, they are. I reshared it about an hour ago, so you should be able to see it on there. Um, Rena X, tomato sauce or marinara sauce? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's whatever you like the best, okay? Uh, let's see. Adrian said it looks good. And Victoria said we're using sausage too. Okay. So you're making it along with me. That's great. Good. I love it when it's that way. Okay, so now I am going to take some flatbread. I'll show you the one that I'm using here. Okay, it's a pocketless pita bread. These are really, really good. So I'm just going to put these on the um, silicone baking mats right here. So I made extra shrimp because uh, this, we're going to have this as our dinner tonight. Why not? You got Sounds it. good. You can't waste anything nowadays, right? That food is just so expensive so i am just going to take some red pepper flakes here a little bit of fresh lemon juice victoria said it's taking two of us in my kitchen to keep up with one of you well and tell me if you need anything if you need me to go back on anything i'd be happy to help okay all right and karen said making my shopping list now oh sounds great that's great okay so my shrimp are done Remember, it has the garlic, the salt, the pepper, a little butter, a little bit of olive oil in here, and they are basically just about cooked through because they are gonna go into the oven, so they are gonna take a little bit longer and they will finish up there, okay? So I'm gonna kinda toss these shrimp with some fresh lemon juice, and then a little bit of red pepper flakes, okay? That's if you like a little bit of heat, okay? If you don't want it to be spicy at all, just leave the red pepper flakes out. Wow, okay? that lemon juice is really good. So these are the red pepper flakes, so if you want them, you just take a little bit and just kind of sprinkle them around, okay? And I'm just gonna toss this around. Okay, so it makes a really good sauce. Anna said, I'm waiting for you to come and cook for me. Where do you live, Anna? And Icelip Library said, looks delish. Thank you so much. Hello, Lori. We'll be there soon, right? Everybody, what you want to do is take some of this really good tasting sauce with the shrimp, the garlic, and just kind of brush the bread with the sauce, okay? Just brush it all around. Now, this one, you do want to have into a 425 oven, okay? So, it'll get the bread a little bit more crisp, okay? Again, pizza dough, anything like that would work really well with this. You could, at the end, always hit it with a little bit of fresh parsley if you wanted to. And going back on the shrimp, you never want to buy, believe it or not, 
fresh shrimp unless you see it coming off the boat, okay? Frozen will stay better for you. When you go to the seafood market, they really just defrosted it for you. That's all it really is. And of course, it depends where you live. Uh, but you want to get the frozen ones and they will last a lot longer. The black tiger shrimp that you see out there, I find sometimes they can be really, really good. Sometimes they have a little bit of toughness to them. Okay. Um, when I was in the restaurant business and being a private chef, I used a lot of the white gulf shrimp and those were some of your best shrimp but they were very very pricey i can't imagine what they are today the ice up library said i'll be over soon to join you for dinner <laughs> okay so you're taking that scampi butter and you're just brushing it all over this flatbread just like this here okay and now i'm going to take some of the shrimp and layer it on here i'm going to put some of the mozzarella cheese on top and i take a combination of like a little romano cheese parmesan cheese and mozzarella cheese and make my own blend try to just buy one of the blocks of the the grated cheese and also the uh, mozzarella cheese because it is so much better in quality okay i always take the tails off no matter what type of dish i am doing because when I was in the restaurant business or even at the libraries, I want it to be easy for everybody to eat and enjoy. So I'm just going to place these around here. I'm going to show everybody a little different way that you could do this too. And it's actually a little bit easier to eat. So if you take the shrimp just like this, okay, these are a size 15. So they're on the larger side size, but they're in that that 15 to 30 where they're going to be really tender. If you cut it right down the center and you lay it just like that, you will get uh, just, e it'll be easier to eat and enjoy. And it looks like you gave your guests a lot more shrimp. So Chris, you think you're getting a lot of shrimp tonight? You're really not. Huh? Nope, everyone knows your secret now. They know my secret. But even when I do this in the libraries, if I if everybody was supposed to get one shrimp I, and I cut it in half, they all still get one shrimp no matter what. Okay, so I'm just putting this right down the middle. Just popping my head over there to see how my pizza nachos are doing. Gonna go check on it in one second. You will make those pizza nachos over and over again. I'm going to give everybody the menus that we are going to be doing for the next couple food festivals while we are making our cinnamon white hot chocolate with chocolate marshmallow stirrers. I did that back when I first started in the public libraries and I did that, that about 10 years ago. 10 years, Chris, doing this. Wow. You used to enjoy going to the libraries then. I had free time then. <laughs> you had free time then, yes. All right, let me go check on those pizza nachos. Just about another minute or two, and they will actually be done. I am going to cut these shrimp here too. And then we're going to put the cheese on top. Go ahead, Chris. Janet said, so nice to have met you in person for the first time at the station branch of the Huntington Library. Thank you so much, Janet. Thank you. Actually, I, I can picture who you are, too, because I remember us talking in that. Thanks so much. Joy X, are those naan or flatbread? They're flatbread. Uh, I will look at the uh, brand for you in a minute so you can see what brand I am using. But it's almost like the baguette. Whatever you really would enjoy, like as a flatbread pizza, those are the ones to buy. So let's just lay this down just like this here. And then we're going to use that remaining butter and garlic and put it right on top of here. And then I'm going to put all the different cheeses on. Go ahead, Chris. Nope, nothing. Oh, okay. Okay, I am getting the nachos. Now, 
everybody, this is the way the pizza nachos come out. Okay. I know my so dinner. Just kind of take them just like that. And they are piping hot. And again, put salt, ground sausage on here. Uh, like Gail had said, some ground beef. You can use ground turkey or just make these vegetarian style. Okay. So I'm just going to leave, you know, leave it right over here. I am going to take this remaining garlic, butter, and just kind of drizzle it over this. Gail X, how many more years of school do you have, Chris? Uh, too many. Uh, I thought you meant me, Gail, of, yeah. of, of cooking. Yeah. Uh, about two years, then I have to go for my master's after that. Uh, let's see. Emily said yummy. Donna said looks delicious. Barbara said yum. Marianne said I'm allergic to shrimp. Can I substitute scallops? Scallops, absolutely. Even like... You ever see a recipe for like chicken scampi? If you did that on here, that would work great too. Okay. And Andy said, looks so good. Thanks so much. Thanks, Andy. Okay, I am just going to put this right over here. Now I'm just going to top it with some of the Parmesan cheese. A little bit here. Gail said, both dishes look wonderful. Can't wait to try them. Thank you so much, Gail. Gail, I did a class at your library the other day with teens, and we had 22 teens come out for the program, which was so nice to see. The library does such a great job getting those teens in. You have great programs there. And now I'm just taking some Romano cheese. Just shave that right on top. Adrian said she wishes me good luck in, in my endeavors. Thank you. And now some mozzarella cheese that we grated before. Just kind of sprinkle this around. This is going to take about seven, nine, ten minutes at the most. Okay. This goes into the 425 oven. You just want to get it nice and crisp. Shrimp scampi flatbread. Barbara asks, what, uh, what age group are you planning to teach? Uh, my goal is kindergarten, but I'll be certified from birth through sixth grade. And when I go to the libraries who are talking about teaching and that, I do, I think the youngest I ever had was two years old. And believe it or not, my oldest patron that ever came to see me at a library, it was from the Middle Country Library on Long Island, 103. 103. She would come with her daughter. Always loved seeing her. All right, everybody. This is our shrimp scampi flatbread. I'm going to go pop that into the oven. Okay, and then right over to our pizza nachos, Chris. Lucy and Ethel from the Kamsawag Library are watching. Lucy and Ethel, my, some of my favorite people. You guys are so wonderful. Thank you for watching, and thank you for always coming. Every time I'm at the library, no matter if it's pouring rain, snowing, you guys come. Thank you. Anna said, just got Kamsawag letter. Are you in person March 31st, Irish soda bread? March 31st, Irish soda bread. No, I'm not. I am, I am there virtually, and I have a menu that I'll share with you as we're waiting for the cinnamon white hot chocolate to cook, okay? Uh, but I think in April I'm there, okay? All right, I am going to use this burner right here. I'm gonna, oh, uh, someone's on. Lacey? Lacey's on. Lacey? Happy early birthday, Lacey. Happy birthday. Yeah, everyone type in the comment, wish Lacey a happy birthday. And also, Adrian said she hopes to make 103 to keep watching Chef Rob. 104, you gotta beat her, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Everybody, this is my cinnamon white hot chocolate, okay? Lacey, you would love this, I promise you would. And your friend, I remember your friend coming there too, it was great. So you want to take this and put in, this is almond milk. It is unsweetened, and you want six cups of this, okay? I am just going to make a little bit less here because this is my wife, my son, and I. My other son is out. And 
now what you do with this is put in the cinnamon, you put in the nutmeg as well, okay? So the cinnamon, one teaspoon of cinnamon in here. And then we're gonna take just about a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. So just a little bit. And we're just gonna let this get nice and hot. We're gonna add in the white chocolate, okay? You can cut them into small pieces or you could just make life easy and just buy some small little chocolate chips just like this, okay? So let's leave this on here. On our other burner here, we're just gonna take just a little bit of water and turn this up. DNX, does cinnamon go bad? Does cinnamon go bad? It will lose its potency over time. I would say within a year to year and a half, but keep it in a cool, dry, dark place and it will, it'll last, okay? If you buy one today, the date will probably be on there for something of 23 that it'll say that'll be good till. Again, keep it cool, dark place, okay? Okay, so. We're gonna make our cinnamon white hot chocolate here, okay? And we're just gonna bring this to a boil, and then we're gonna add in the white hot chocolate and the agave. Now, not everybody has the agave. You can add just in just a little bit of honey, or another thing that you can substitute for agave, depending on the recipe, could be maple syrup, or even like the blackstrap molasses uh, is a substitute for it. So again, not everybody has it. Just buy a small bottle if you're not gonna go through it. But Kathy, it really oh. does make it nice and sweet and helps it along really good. Go ahead. Kathy X, what did you put in first? My video skipped. Okay, it is the vanilla flavored unsweetened almond milk. Usually like in the stores, either the Almond Breeze or they have another brand uh, that you can buy. Put in some cinnamon and some nutmeg. I'm leaving on the side some white chocolate chips, okay? And you know white chocolate is not really chocolate, right? Who knew that out there? I know a lot of you do. You guys are good cooks out there. So it's more a vanilla milk based uh, type of texture and uh, not really sure why they call it chocolate, but I guess because it just comes off like as little chocolate chips, but vanilla. Okay, I'm just gonna slide this over here. So when I came up with this recipe years ago, I said I thought it needed some real chocolate in there. So with the real chocolate, that is when I said, let's make some chocolate marshmallow stirrers. And with that, you're just gonna take some of these regular sized marshmallows. This serving here would be good enough for like, I would say eight of them. Okay, just take these lollipop sticks, pop them right in here. Boy, I remember doing this at a library, the Mastic Marichas Library. 40 people came, I did 40, 40 of these, and uh, I'll have to do this one again because it was so long. It was like nine years ago that I did this. Gail said, that's why I like white chocolate. I don't care for the real chocolate. Yep, great substitute then, yes. Let's see. Um, so I'm just putting all these together. I'm just waiting for the uh, water to boil. I'll melt down some of that uh, chocolate chips. Joe X, can you leave the agave or any sweetener out? Yeah, I, it's gonna need a little bit of sweetness in there, so you'd have to decide if you just wanna put a little bit of sugar, a little honey, the agave, something, some, it needs a little something in there. Okay, so everybody's idea of a different sweetener is so different. So whatever is your preference, that's what you want to use. Emily said, Clara is excited for the hot chocolate. My niece is making this with me. Oh, that's super. That is so great, Emily. I am just going to go check on our flatbread. You want to keep an eye on that. Just a couple minutes. Okay, so let's let this come to a boil. Let's get this uh, 
hot, let that come to a boil, and then I can melt down my chocolate and make my chocolate marshmallow stirrers. Okay, so our next food festival, these are all Eastern time, okay? March 19th at 3 o'clock, a healthy spring. So we're trying to get spring off to a healthy start, okay? I know I'm not doing that winter, right? I don't leave in winter now, uh, not a healthy start or finish. We're going to do an avocado and chickpea salad. I love the combination of those two. A spring green onions and sour cream biscuits. And then a spring asparagus and mozzarella capellini pancake. You will love that pancake. I used to make it with shrimp. And you can, if you're making it that day with me, have some cooked shrimp. And you can add shrimp to it. It's so good. Cheese and pasta on the inside. And the outside, really nice, crisp pasta, okay? Lucy and Ethel, I know I've made that for you, right? And then April 9th at 3 o'clock, we're going to do a grilled salmon taco. Salmon, like my favorite of anything, with an avocado and yellow pepper topping. We're going to do chicken piccata meatballs. And then we're going to do them over egg noodles. And so if you're cooking along with us, don't have to make the egg noodles. You, it's just a suggestion that you can make it that way. And then we're going to do a spring lemon cake with a lemon crumb topping. Getting back to the March one, Chris, I forgot the dessert. And I have three on there. Minion cupcakes, remember? Oh, we're yeah. We were just talking about that. So we're going, to do the, we're going to do the minion cupcakes. I will make note of it. There is no recipe for that, everybody. You're just going to watch how I do it, and uh, you, you'll know how to do it a day later, okay? few things. I'm just going to get my flatbread. Adrian asked about adding brown sugar. Uh, that absolutely would be fine, Adrian. Monica said, eager to try this at home. Looks delish. Thank you so much. And Barbara asked, the March 19th is on your site? March 19th. It is not up there yet, okay? But it will be soon. And any of the libraries that are participating today, you can look on there and you can always contact them as well. So this here is our shrimp scampi flatbread. How does that look, everybody? Nice crisp edges. This looks, is perfect. Looks like my dinner. Could put a little fresh basil on here. A little pesto would be good on here as well. Uh, I like pesto, you can tell. Really? Right? Yeah, yeah. Just, yep. And then our pizza nachos, which I'd love to dive in there right now, but I'm not going to. I will. This no. is getting pretty hot right now so I am going to add in the white chocolate so for this recipe if you're using six cups of the milk you would put in one of those 12 ounce bags of the white chocolate typically any time around the holidays is the time to buy it okay Emily said yummy and Emily from Beth Page Library said hello hello Emily and Emily and Kathy said yum so we are just reducing this, okay? I'm turning it off, okay? And I'm just gonna add in the agave, one tablespoon of agave to this. You could take this off the burner, you could just stay with it and just make sure nothing sticks, nothing's sticking, it just melted really well. This is gonna have such good flavor to it. Gail said, I know the Rockville Center Library is doing the March 19th festival. I'm already registered. So you could always check with them as well, too. Okay. So this cinnamon white hot chocolate is done. Just gonna kind of ladle it. You could see no white chocolate, it just already melted in there. So I'm just gonna let that rest a minute. This is starting to get really hot now. So I am just gonna take some semi-sweet chocolate chips. Anna said for Comswag, it's in person for March 31st, April 6th and May, or April 6th and 25th and May 10th. In person? No, that, that, I know that's not right. They may have okay. put on their website that they do in person, but it, it's not for um, those classes. I am just adding a dot of vegetable oil, either vegetable oil, or you could always add in um, like a little bit of butter. You need a little bit of fat, 
Okay. I'm just going to get something to stir this with. And we're just going to let this cook down here. And then everybody, we have a on a Zoom, and you can go to any of these libraries. We'll post it pretty soon on our Facebook page. But we are doing a spring brunch. Okay, so if you want to cook along with us and make a spring brunch, we'll have all the libraries listed on our Facebook page. Okay, so this chocolate, see how quick it just melts right down? I actually turned the burner off because I don't want it to get too hot. Now you could take some wax paper. And just put it on a plate just like that. And you could either take a brush or just take that lollipop stick and just go just like that. Put it right on there. Okay, so if you want to use those real jumbo campfire ones, you could do that. Now, if you wanted to put little sprinkles on this or decorate them for uh, any of the holidays, go for that. Okay. I am going to get out a couple mugs to put the white hot chocolate in there. Mark asked, what did you say to add to the chocolate vegetable oil you and how add, much? You could add a dot of vegetable oil or a, a little bit of butter, and just as long as it has a little bit of fat, just to kind of loosen it up. Okay, see how these are? And this you will take and put right into your uh, cinnamon white hot chocolate. And the amount of chocolate I put in would be for about eight of these stirrers. So if you want to make more of them, uh, I know you would love to have them during a movie. Adrian says it looks like s'mores and maybe roll them in graham cracker crumbs. We could do that, right? Emily said those marshmallows look yummy. And Rena said, FYI, add any extra password you can to Zoom meetings. I've been a, a participant in two recent Zoom meetings that were uh, Zoom bombed and hacked, unfortunately. So yes, we always make sure we add a password on there, so. Yeah, t typically uh, the library will just send out the Zoom uh, to the patrons that have been signed up. You never want to put a Zoom uh, thing just on your website, okay? Because then you're setting yourself up to be hacked. Okay, so I am just going to move this right here. And I'm going to get my mugs. Clara says yum. So I'm just going to ladle two of these right here. Okay. Okay. So just take some of this cinnamon white hot chocolate, put it right in here. And Joan said, everything looks delicious. Hello, Aunt Joan. Hello. How are you? How are you? Okay, our cinnamon white hot chocolate. And then our chocolate marshmallow stirrers. You put that in there, and life only gets better and better. Serve it just like that. This is yours, Aunt Joan. Come and get it. Come and get it. You know where we live. Just going to put another one out there. And then I have something else to show everybody that you would probably love to buy if you have children, grandchildren, or you just want to have fun and enjoy something. Some of you have seen it if you have um, watched my videos over time. Okay. She said she'll be there soon. <laughs> Hopefully no traffic. And Rena X, is it okay to use a low calorie or 30 calorie almond milk? Yeah, that'd be fine. Absolutely. But when you add in that white chocolate, uh, those uh, 30 calories, uh, they don't seem to matter much anymore, you know? Adrian said, life is good with Chef Rob cooking. Thank you, Adrian. 
So Chris, you want to just show everybody what we just made and I'm going to set up our other thing. Okay, so everybody, right over here, this is a little s'mores kit that we bought, okay? It is just fantastic. It, we have fun with this, uh, doing this with other libraries, and uh, just doing it for family night here, okay? Just going to see if that goes on. I'm not seeing the light on. I wonder if the plug had come out. Kirsten asks, is there an alternative to almond milk if you're allergic to nuts? A any milk would do then, absolutely. Like oat really, milk, maybe? Yes. So this little s'mores kit here, it comes with these four little inserts here, okay? Has this little burner right here that's starting to get hot. When I do this, I like to use these big campfire marshmallows. So again, just picture it, and I need this to get hotter, so I'm going to do it in a second. But you want to, this is about $32 for a set like this. And it just makes a, a really fun night to, to make these uh, toasted marshmallows. And we just checked the Comswag, uh page. That's actually a different presenter that is doing those classes. No, they're having somebody else. That can't be. Uh, Kirsten said, thank you. Karen said, chef, I love that you create such wonderful dishes with beautiful presentation, yet make us all feel like we can do it. Thank you. You can do it. Absolutely. And I want to go over... Uh, I'm still going to do the uh, marshmallow in a second, but I want to tell you some other classes that we have. In May, we have a food festival. It is a Monday night. No, I think it's a 25th. It's at 6.30. We're doing a guacamole salad with tricolored tomatoes, and it has some fresh lime in it. We're going to do some Baltimore lump crab cakes. Crab cakes right now is crazy. It's like $37 a pound, and that's at the clubs, okay? That's how much it is. Crab cakes have just really gone up. And a rhubarb and strawberry crisp. So if you like rhubarb, you will love this. And when we do our Zoom class on April 30th at 1 o'clock, again, it's on Zoom. We're doing a mascarpone and strawberry stuffed French toast. And then we're going to do our blueberry scones with a sweet orange drizzle on top. I will... In a few weeks, put it on my Facebook page, the libraries that are participating. Feel free to call them and get the Zoom from them. It will be after April 1st, okay? Go ahead. Chris. Gail X, what brand is the s'mores kit? What brand is it? Um, Gail, I, I did buy it from Walmart, but there are so many different ones out there, and they all look the same, so uh, you're not going to go wrong pretty much with any of them that you that you look for. Even okay? if you have a burner like this, you could use that. Yeah, if you just had a little portable burner like this, but always set it up with some graham crackers, some of these chocolate bars. Boy, are they thin now. Oh my God, they are so thin. They're almost healthy, they're so thin. Um, let me tell you about a few of the classes that we have coming up. Um, let's see, this Monday, uh, the Hicksville Public Library. Uh, if you go to my Facebook page, you will see it. But two, three o'clock, we are doing a healthy southwestern chopped salad and a rotisserie chicken tortilla casserole. Okay, and that's at the Hicksville Public Library. And then Tuesday, we're in Detroit. The Detroit Public Library, 6.30, a broccoli and sharp cheddar cheese soup and Irish soda bread muffins. And then on Thursday on Zoom, 7 o'clock, Irish soda bread muffins and a traditional Irish soda bread. And that is at the Somerset Public Library in New Jersey. Linda said, another delightful class. Thank you to Chef Rob, Chris, and the libraries. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. And everybody, check out my Facebook page, Simply Creative Chef Rob, for different uh, programs. And I hope I will see you at your libraries. If you are from out of state, uh, there will be a time I will come in to see you and, and say hello. Uh, so we have you know, the Monmouth County Library. I know I'll always stop in there. Uh, I'll be there in New Jersey someday, I promise. 
And see how these start toasting? Okay. And like Chris said, a burner like this would be perfect for it. Okay. So we have some serious eating to do now, Chris. And then we got to go for a walk. Got to go for a walk then. Uh, let's see. Adrian said that she'll register for March 1st for the Irish Soda Bread class at Riverhead Library next Saturday. Sounds good. Don't uh, forget your bowls. Well, oh, never mind. Okay. Um, Emily said, sorry, I have to go. Have a good evening, Chef Rob and Chris. You too, Emily. Rena said, is Detroit Zoom or Facebook? I have school conferences, so hoping I could view afterwards. It's Facebook, yes. So it'll still be on there for days, weeks, and months. Yes, it will. The Monmouth Library said, this was amazing, Chef. Thanks so much. Can't wait to go home and get cooking. We are waiting to meet you. Thank you. Uh, Kirsten said, thank you, Chef Rob and Chris and the Seaford Library. Gail said thanks, and also thank you, Chef and Chris, for so much for one of these of these many wonderful programs with easy to follow recipes resulting in delicious foods. And the Monmouth County Library said we'll cook for you, LOL. Dawn said thank you for the Cut Dog, uh, New Suffolk Library. Hi, Dawn. Let's is see. it Kirsten from Seaford or is it Kristen? Kirsten. Okay, Kirsten. Let's see. Adrian said, thank you so much. You brightened up a cold day. Good. Janet said, thank you for another great demo. Maureen said, thank you. Islip said, thank you from the Islip Library. See you in person in March. In March, that's right. Everybody, here's our toasted marshmallow. See how it does it? Nice job. Just have a little patience. Keep twisting this. It's really good. Just look up a s'mores kit and uh, you'll get this burner and the little things with it too, okay? And soon all the stores will have these marshmallows, the real jumbo ones, makes it fun. So before we say goodbye, uh, we're gonna zoom in on all the different foods that we made, and I wanna thank all the libraries that participated today and all you folks that always watch all the time. Uh, we have fun doing this. And our shrimp scampi pizza. All right, everybody, have a great day, and thank you as always.